Hello and welcome back to game two of NECC League of Legends semifinals. St. Clair College versus D er, Durham College. St. Clair up one game. Up we, in game one. And we are going to see the same bot lane come out here and as well as jungle, but bot lane here come out for St. Clair. And we saw this is the first time I've really seen Barlow be successful on a slower paced ADC. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the Ash we saw last game in that final team fight near or close to final team fight, that final dragon fight there near the bottom. Barlow having that big flash play that was able to finish the team fight essentially for Zephyrod. Zephyrod was able to clean up after that. We are going to see Ricky and E-Hug up here near the tri bush. She, yeah, because last game they were doing a lot of poking near this tri bush and in the river there. So we're seeing three players actually move up there. Yeah, so nothing else going on here. We do see the Jarvan do the typical ward up in the river. Go back at the sweeper. Ricky going to walk in here. We'll spot out the Akali here. We'll go for the early game fight, but Ehug going to be waiting here. That's both We'll finally down. come in. Knock up is available. If Ricky can land this knock up, we'll get the flash forward. Going to go for the E as well. Anime girl going to have to try and get out, but no. That's first and blood. that's the problem with TP Ignite. You don't have the flash to escape. Anime girl started the Q, didn't have the E for escape either. And that is so big for St. Clair. Ricky getting ahead in this lane. It's going to be a big problem for a colleague. Yeah, and then TP immediately burned. Ricky is up on TP here. Like, no flash available from the anime girl to begin with. That, that is just, uh, just a massive win. And I think Ricky here most likely will try and shove the wave, get a few levels under his belt, and then he will back TP with an item advantage to start off this game. And, I mean, this is a drastic change from what we saw in the last one. Yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, last game we kind of saw Ricky get steamrolled in the 1v1s. Uh, e even though, he, uh, to be fair, in the early game he was fairly strong against the Mundo, but unfortunately he just got out, like, he got outstatted eventually once the items came in. Yeah. Uh, but nice trades coming out from Anime Girl, actually. Yeah, and we are going to see Azir put a little poke damage down, let Jarvan know that he knew he was there. Looks like the Akali will try and stop the back, and it's going to be very important because Ichirox now has a wave shoving towards him. He wants to get up this TP as soon as possible, engage yeah. him, come through in the bot lane, but Fresh going to shield up. Should be okay here. Oof will back off. So I was going to say, in the top lane, it's very important that Akali keeps shoving this wave into Aatrox because the longer that uh, Akali can stay... Oh, missed the uh, Caddy actually. That was big. But, um, I mean, as long as the Akali can keep shoving this in, it will be massive because Ricky can't TP with his with his uh, item advantage that he picked up from that early kill. Mm -hmm. and as we're seeing here, that Silas Harass gonna come in a little bit. Zephyrot gonna have to move back to tower, but Barlow and Fresh hopefully gonna be able to push this wave in. They've got a lot of damage onto Oof there, honestly. Even with his Aftershock up and everything, uh, the poke damage coming out, missed hook there. Ooh. Yeah, it is gonna be a TP here from Ricky. We'll go back top lane with the boots. Or sorry, not the boots, the longsword and the ruby crystal and dark seal actually for the Akali. So a little bit of confidence there, despite yeah. going down in that first blood, is picking up the dark seal and trying to get that stack started sometime soon. Yeah, yeah, definitely a bit of a risky play, uh, but also could work out for sure. Jarvan coming up to the top lane. He is looking for a gank here on Ricky. Ricky gonna go in on anime girl. He sees the Jarvan starting Ooh. to walk towards that mid bush. E hug will... just back too. Yeah. Oh he's, oh, he's sandwiched in this mid bush here. They're gonna be able to hit the knock up. Damage coming out. A lot of damage coming oh. out. The ignite came out. Almost able to take down. He's Mobbin. gonna win this. Q. He's gonna win this. He wins that. Holy oh. crap! How did Ricky? That's the Omni vamp. Oh, my that is goodness. that's the level three Aatrox Omni vamp. He's gonna be able to push this in. Moffat not enough health to even like contest this. That's another kill for Ricky. That is a heartbreaker for Durham. The Lots fact that not only did they, they burned the Ignite too. And I think they thought that would kill. Oh, Hectic gonna be caught out here. Gonna be an instant flash out of that one. So gonna get that flash off the mid lane. I was gonna say in the top lane, I think it was a really good try. See what they did here was they popped the Ignite right here. Right and there. Moffat yeah. so low, took the auto, had to flash out here. The Ignite was down, but he's healing from that pot. And he got the Q and the auto came through like, it was so well played there by Ricky. The fact that he knew that the flash was going to come through, the Jarvan had to disengage. So he hops into the bush, doesn't let the auto come through. Yeah, going to gank mid here. No flash available. Fresh going to be here for the gank that as well. should but be enough there. Oh, doesn't even need him. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't even need him. Fresh oh. did give him the shield, was able to pick up the assist. 
Uh, Flash gonna come out from Barlow and Bo, but the Ignite came out from Oof there, actually. Yeah, so they committed not a lot. the worst trade in Barlow's... Uh, well, it, it was actually, in Durham's favor for he sure. He kept but. the heal as well, which is very yeah. important. But uh, I think right now, the already a Phage built for Aatrox in top lane. He's just going to dominate this lane moving forward. And that is so good for St. Clair. I think after that first game, definitely just getting stat checked by that Mundo. A little bit demoralizing. Obviously, he did win that game, so it felt good. But in the second one, Ricky, it, it's his time to shine. It's, it's the reason you ban Ricky's Aatrox, and this is it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Aatrox definitely has been like almost perma banned for like the entire season, really here for NECC. Now, 3-0 gold difference, about one and a half k. I mean, obviously, a lot of that is going to be on the Aatrox C800 in his favor here. He will walk in. Does have level six as well. Looking to try and find Anime Girl. We'll get a lot of damage. Going to pop the ult as well. W going to be landed. Auto is going to come down, but will back off here. So. Does end up getting quite a bit of damage. No TP available for the Akali either. So again, Ricky just bullying this Akali out of lane yeah. consistently. And that is the problem, right? You gave up that first blood. You didn't have the flash, so you couldn't escape it. And in the end, you know, they're going to go for it. You're going to go for the tower dive. Tower 206 dive? damage is going to flash for it. Okay, yeah. He will be available, but Jarvan going to be sneaking up here. So Ricky going to stay, though. Knows no TP is available for the Akali. We'll shove in the wave. Jarvan going to come here to cover the wave for a second. But again, just three hole on this Aatrox right now. What do you do yeah. if you're Durham? <laughs> I don't know. And, and uh, one thing, too, is we saw the Akali pick up the Dark Seal as soon as she lost the first one. No blood. way he goes Ricky for this. going for the second dive? No. <laughs> too much damage being taken. He is going to have to go out. E-Hug, though, here in the river to support him. But it looks like they're just going to confirm this. And he's moving back to his red buff. Mid lane here. Going to clear out some vision. Yeah, this, this top lane is... I mean, it's going in Ricky's favor. It's exactly, it's exactly what we didn't see from Ricky last game. It's it, it's the exact opposite of last game. Yeah, it is in three zero oh, and zero oh, on the Sage Trox. Already three hundred gold shutdown for him there. Already had a pickaxe and phage so strong right now. And just if you're Durham, you have to look at other places on the map, right? You do have a small farm advantage here in the bot lane. Fifteen CS for the the uh, Jinx. Pretty even in the mid lane. Uh, for both sides, but we do see a Dark Seal built on the Silas here. So looks for the engage, finds it onto the Aatrox, or not the, sorry, the Azir. Won't get the ult though, so in the end it will just be an ult traded for nothing. And I mean, right now, again, like I said, in the mid lane, laning phase isn't really going to do too much for either of these players. I, I think both Azir and Silas really do struggle in the laning phase. They aren't, yeah. don't have a lot of damage, so I think we're going to see a lot of this kind of poking a little bit but not really going to find any solid kills unless the junglers come. Yeah, I really don't see, think we're going to see anything unless the jungler's there. Um, bot lane, however, I think bot lane is a completely different yeah. story. I think we could definitely see a 2v2 come down, and at this point, I'm thinking it's in Durham's favor. Yeah, for sure, and I'm looking for St. Clair to try and take this dragon sometime soon. Looks like they are going to motion towards it. Jarvan is going to be down here as well, but they want to take this because they know Jarvan is bottom half, and... I mean, even if they decide to go for this Herald, if you're Durham, like it, right now, Ricky is so strong on that Aatrox, he could just walk down to that Herald and it is basically a death sentence for you. So Moffat will get the E in here, will be able to see this dragon. Is he going to go for the steal? Has the Q available? He's going to go for it. No, he's not going to get it. He's not going to go for it and will be a dragon confirmed here and so much, so damage. much damage. Onto a Kali W going to go down E out of it for a second and will just back off again. You can't, it's just so hard to lane right now for this Akali. He's so far behind. Three kills over for Ricky right now. It's impossible lane. <laughs> that, that Dark Seal just becoming more and more wasted gold as True. the time goes True. on. That's, it's like, that's, that's so much stats that she's losing because she decided to go for that Dark Seal so early on in the game while also being behind, keep in mind. And it, it's so hard too right now because like the power of Akali is the fact that you get that TP available in the early game. You can't look for an early assassination. That's where you find some power. But both times the TP had to be used just to get back to lane. And we're going to see now just the aura. Barlow going to be taken down here. Will in. be ulted. That's going to be a three man. That's going to be Barlow saying bar by. Unfortunately, will be taken down here. But a lot of use for that. I mean, he got three ults and knew the Jarvan was down there. And it does mean they can go towards the top lane. Look for <laughs> this Herald sometime soon.
Going in again, knowing he's got the safety of knowing that Jarvan is bot lane. He's just going to keep on trading with this Akali. Trying to get a C... I think he just needs to try and, like, confirm a CS lead here, honestly. They've been fairly close. The Akali has been able to keep up, even though she's been out of lane so much with these three deaths. Um, so I think Ricky just need, really needs to focus on getting a CS lead up here, zoning, and zoning Akali all of the minions. Yeah, I think what he'll, we'll do now, maybe we'll have multiple people come in here for a dive because they know, obviously, no flash on the Sakali. We'll have Shroud and Alt available, so a little bit of escape. But uh, I mean, Harold is picked up here and yeah. just will really be picked up here in just a second, and I'm looking for that to go top lane. Oh, they're gonna meet Jarvan at blue though. See him there. Ooh, he doesn't know. Yeah, gonna be here, but EQ over the wall will save him. So. In the end, they will just be a stolen blue for the side of St. Clair. And you can't really contest this if you're Durham because, you know, your Aatrox is just so far ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Eog also just tossed the ultimate out there for zoning, but he is going to use it to secure the, that blue buff there at the end. Also going to take this Grom here. The Jarvan just losing so much because of that top lane pressure from, from the Aatrox here. And not only does it lose it for Jarvan, right? The fact that blue buff, instead of going over to the Silas, who needs it so desperately yeah. for that wave clear to match Azir, now that Azir has items, uh, he loses that blue buff. Azir's going to get it. Azir can shove in waves. Silas will have back here. Going to lose uh, probably a wave uh, sometime soon. And it just makes it so much harder to play this laning phase out. And, I mean, right now, St. Clair playing an excellent macro game and doing exactly what we thought they'd do in that first game when they got Ricky's Jax is just winning through top jungle. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then, of course, bot lane here, too. Uh, I, I like the way that Durham is playing towards their bot lane. They've realized, okay, top is top is not where we're going this game. So they're going towards bottom. We're seeing Oof get set up in those, Ooh. In those bushes. Oh, Ignite going to come out. He's going in on Ricky. That's a lot oh, of damage. But the no W, way. Akali just barely got left in the W. He's going to get pulled right back to the middle, right back to Ricky. And you know what the thing was too? He actually dodged the second charge of the ultimate with a nice sidestep mm -hmm. on the E and caught her with the W as she was Ring forward. Yeah. So, I mean, Ricky there perfectly calculated, knew exactly what he was doing, and is going to extend his lead even further now. Probably going to back for, uh, I'm assuming, Black Cleaver or a Gore Drink or something along those lines. Just taking an even bigger lead against the Sakali, and this is what we expected from Ricky in the first game, and I love to see it here in game two. Yeah, definitely. And we're going to see Jarvan waiting in this bush for the lane gank once again. He is going to push, get off the back here, actually. And Zephyrod, yeah, that he's really just pushing in the waves on the Silas, on the Silas here. Well, you have to try and take stuff in the other sides of the map, right? Like, yeah. obviously, your top lane never going to be winning at this point. Like, down 4-0 against this Aatrox. You have to try and look for an advantage. Get your Jinx ahead uh, even more than she is. Get your Silas even more ahead, or even more ahead than he is right now. Um, but I think, yeah, we are going to get a quick replay here in the top lane. And we see here Akali going for the R. A nice sidestep. Oh, yes. He gets a sidestep on the Q there. I don't know how that W hit. That was pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The, honestly, I, I want to say she was out of it. Then again, very close to that yeah. line at the end. And we didn't see the W, the, that whole like area fade. So it definitely was up. Oof. Gonna go in. They're gonna engage under the turret here, but Barlow's got the Lulu ult. There's too much damage coming out from the turret. Fresh taking a lot of damage from Kiora's, Ooh. and that's gonna be the kill for Kiora's 2-0. I cannot believe that. that They do lose mid turret in the process, though Zephyr will be able to shove it in. E gonna hit, but heck, Wick will not go in there, so it will just be a turret over. Mid lane turret gonna go down, and uh, I mean, I can't believe they got that kill in the ball lane, to be honest. It was really well played by Bot there. The fact that that one auto just out of range, and Jinx switches to the Q at the last second, finds Lulu there. Um, a little bit of light, a little bit of hope there for the side of Durham. And you need this Jinx to start mega scaling because if the Jinx can get far ahead, it kind of offsets what the Aatrox can do in the top lane, especially now that bot turret's going to be gone here very soon. Um, you can kind of balance the game out in a way. Yeah, and uh, ooh, another dive from that. Ricky. There's just too much damage. Like, I. I <laughs> Oh, what are you going to do? That's going to be the turret coming out. Top lane, going to get pushed in a little more. Probably going to see Ricky start push, uh, setting his eyes on bot lane Ooh, here. objective bounties. We objective haven't bounties seen those. did come in. Yeah, we haven't seen those yet. So we got, we got to talk about objective bounties because it is a new mechanic here in preseason. So uh, if you didn't know, it, all objectives, so that includes dragons, uh, barons, and 
all turrets become worth money for the opposing team. So you can't really see the values of them right now, but outers are worth 250 across the team, so it's 50 gold per person. Mm -hmm. And then inners are, I think, 500, so it'd be 100 per person, and then so on and so I forth. I want to say inners are 400, 400? because dragons and baron are, and rift are 500. Okay. The, the pit objectives are 500, for sure, I can tell you that. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, outer turrets, 250, that sounds about right. Yeah. But inner turrets, I want to say 400. And typically, that's only for the losing teams. Yes. So, normally, it's for the team that is down on kills, I've realized. I, yeah. I, it seems as though the gold differential doesn't I really factor into it. I think it, it, it affects it. it slightly, but it's not a significant amount. Whereas, yeah. normally, like, it, yeah, it would be just whoever's down in kills. So, we do see objective boundaries come through here, and they will disappear after a short time if the kill lead becomes closer or if the gold discrepancy isn't as large. So we could see those go away at any time. Uh, don't really know when. But in the end, there was a bot turret taken down there by the side of Durham. So they did find that objective bounty for themselves. They're going to go in on Anime Girl here. But we'll walk back up. Oh, stun. stun will land. Barlow finds the arrow to Akali's heart. And that is going to be another kill over to this Aatrox 6 and O. Oh, but it will cost them the mid turret here. They are going to have a big flank, though. This could be dangerous. Yeah, uh, Zephron has all man two. flank. This could be huge. Oh no, he gets stunned up. He will go down here. So Kyra is going to find that kill on his ear and they will back up a big flank here, but was found out by that war. They're going to go for the 4v4 Moffat with a good angle here on a Barlow. Hook going to come through. All going to come through as well. Cataclysm going to come down here in just a second. Moffat, no, not going to pop it. Moffat will go down here. Going to get the flash Q onto Oh, Oof there. Oof. Going to be taken down here in just a second. Will be auto down by Barlow there. Barlow going to find that kill. Ricky still chasing after these last two members. Will pop the ult. Going to move forward here, but Chompers will come down and will stop him in his tracks. So in the end. It will be a two for one for the side. Well, I guess two for two technically overall. But uh, I mean, still played pretty well there by St. Clair. Yeah, definitely pretty well. Nice conversion. Obviously, they were able to get that pick on the Akali. And then, you know, that four man flank in on, on Zephyr or after the Zephyr pick uh, was definitely good. Honestly, I thought Durham was going to get away with it to, uh, uh, to begin with. And then we saw um, Oof actually go in with the hook on Barlow. I, I would have liked to see them disengage there more. If yeah, anything. I didn't really see there because they could have gone for the commit there. But the problem is, right, the Jinx already is backed off. You have your Silas already backed off. So even if Jarvan goes in there with the Cataclysm, he can't get enough damage down because the Lulu is still alive and it's providing so much shielding for the side of, uh, of Ash there. So uh, a good choice there. I think you just kind of sacrifice your two people and say, okay, it could have been worse. It wasn't. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, right now, I definitely think Durham needs to slow this game down. You have to try and get uh, the Jinx to a point where she can kind of carry. And looks like Zephron in a bad place. All going to come through. A nice E as well. Flash going to come through as well just to try to escape it. And will be a TP up as well. So, it will burn the Aatrox TP. Anime Girl going to be walking back. Lulu going to give a little bit of speed. But, no, not going to go for the chase. So, in the end, a Flash burn from Zephron as well as TP from Aatrox. Yeah, the alt also burned from Zephyr. Yeah. Uh, although, pretty short cooldown as it looks like. It is going to be back up fairly soon uh, as he has hit that level 2 mark. Uh, <laughs> Polymorph going to come out. He's going to zone him off this vision here. Hey, very important. Vision, that very, very true. important. So, in the end, it will be a mid turret taken, though, and it will be a bot outer as well. So, the objective bounty is being claimed here in just a second. We'll get this turret. Going to go for that last auto. We'll get it. Bounty going to be claimed, but Hectic will go down here in just a second looking for this kill. Will be the Azir, will be found there by, uh, I think it was Ricky, or was it 8? Uh, yeah, it, was it was Ricky. I want to say he was 6 0 before that. Yeah, so he's now 7 0 2. Absolutely smurfing on Durham right now, just all over them. And I mean, right now you have to try and stop this. It is going to be an Ocean Soul as well. St. Clair already with two dragons. 45 seconds before this one pops up. You need to stop this if you are Durham because if they get on Ocean Soul Point, it is going to be so hard to play at this game, especially because think about how much healing this Aatrox is going to get if he gets Ocean Soul. Yeah, yeah. Ricky, like, already being so, so tanky, so healy. He's doing all these things in these fights. E-Hug, I mean, E-Hug's going in for a dive on Moffat right now. Alt is going to come out, <laughs> able to get him. Little bit of assist there from Fresh. Nice little dive from the Gwen. Wow. Yeah, and that's the power of why you're so comfortable going this Gwen into a Jarvan matchup because you have that dash. So it doesn't matter if the Jarvan Cataclysms, you press the E button and yeah. you're out of there. So, uh, I mean, for me, I saw this Jarvan pick and I, it is a very good, it can be very good, but it, it just hasn't really been strong enough to fight this Gwen. And going back to pick Van Phase, you're, if you're Durham, right, you're looking at this game, you blind pick Jarvan last game, they pick Gwen, he does very well on you, and you're looking at this game too, and you're picking the same junglers, and it's kind of just the same result. Yeah, yeah, I, 
I wasn't really sure about the blind pick Jarvan, honestly. And yeah, and we're seeing Ehug take advantage of that. He realized last game was a completely fine matchup. He did he did great in the matchup, so why would he not pick the same champ again? Right? Yeah, 30, 30 or 4.5k difference now in gold. St. Clair on soul point, rolling forward here. Ricky at 702 and Ehug again, 302, playing so well in these games. And it's really been the difference maker, right? Because you have Gwen jungle as a pick that it's it's so hard to say we want to commit a ban to Gwen because we've seen him look good on Kindred, we've seen him look good on Viego, uh, look good on Vi. Like he has so many picks to go through that you feel like throwing a ban at him, even if it is for this very strong Gwen, is, is just so difficult because he has so much other things to fall back on. So I think he's just been such a strong player for St. Clair throughout the regular season, throughout the playoffs, and uh, I can't wait to see what the rest of this game and maybe the rest of the season has in store for him. Yeah, and then keep in mind, with that Gwen pick too, having that in his champ pool allows him to flex to AP when he needs to, because yeah. we know Riggy doesn't have very many AP champs in his pool, right? Uh, and obviously, bot lane, we're not going to see too much, so it's really just Zephyroth that's left there. So Ehug having this AP pick as well, uh, it really helps balance out their team comps. Yeah, for sure. Baron is down to half HP here. TP going to come through as well. They're going to catch out Moffat here with the nice Ash R. Will be able to flash out of it here. Yeah, going to go after them. Meanwhile, Ricky's getting teamed up onto the bot here. Will heal up so much from Gorjank. He's going to stay alive here. He's still Good going. Healing. He's still kicking. No, he goes down. Ignite going to come through. But in the meanwhile, St. Clair is winning the rest of the fight. Shutdown come through, though. That's so much damage for the Jinx. Going to find one. Going to find two. Double kill over for Jinx. He's going to go back in here trying to get the kill. But Jinx still some alive. 700 gold shutdown. Going to go to Barlow. Going to find three. That's going to be a triple for Jinx. But I think a triple for Barlow, two ADCs trading back and forth, but St. Clair ends up with the ace, and that's another team fight win for them in this game. Yeah, they had to... Uh, Durham just had to use so many resources just to kill Ricky there. Uh, but a beautiful fight by Kioras. She's... Like, look at the kiting here in the end. Just so much damage coming out. Boom, boom, boom. Hit by the zero ult. Not phased. Still going to go in. E-Hug is going to be able to... Uh, get tr or tank enough so that Barlow is able to trade him out. And I think the real difference maker in that fight was the dying Zephyroth R, right? Because if he doesn't yeah. land that R, if that doesn't go through, the Jinx chases Ash up, they get the shutdown on Ash, and they turn. They can even get Baron because this Jinx yeah. is so strong right now with the three what, items. Three items. Three yeah. items. Now. So I, I think. Again, Zephyroth coming in clutch with that big R, able to save the team fight, and again, just really good awareness there by Yug. The fact that yes, the Jinx is very strong, but goes in for the E, goes for the auto attacks, able to find that shutdown, 700 gold onto Barlow here. And despite the fact that Jinx found the triple kill, Barlow finds a triple kill of his own, gets some gold back in his pocket. Yes, he is still down here in this game, down an item and a half, but it's still right now. Your Ricky is so strong. Are gonna come through? Not gonna. Oh, it we'll find the Jarvan the actually. Jarvan. Moffat trying to walk away here. We'll be able to escape, but again, we see this jungle discrepancy right now. Level 11 Jarvan to the level 13 Gwen. Farm, you know, 67 Six, difference. Seven. Like, it, it is just so massive right now. Gold discrepancy, you can see 3k built up here. 4k in the top lane, like St. Clair right now. It is really just this bot lane that is the only saving grace here for Durham. Yeah, and honestly, you gotta give, you gotta give respect to Anime Girl right now. Keeping 071 has just been getting slaughtered in laning phase and is still keeping the CS up into this in going on to 25 minutes here. That's <laughs> that's gotta mean something. This Durham is, here this is very going for the Baron. No vision from St. Clair, but Zephyroth definitely has an idea of where they are. The clone's gonna come in. A lot of damage going on to Anime Girl just from the or just from the soldiers themselves. It's down to Ehug 3k. Going in. But they're very low. Look how much damage they got from this Baron. He's going to go in, going to find two. Lula oh, going to come through, going to keep him alive. That's going to be St. Clair getting two, turning on this Baron. They tried it. It was a good try there. You're down 10k gold in this game. You got to go for something, but that was not it. St. Clair going to call their bluff. Take the Baron, run to this soul. And I mean, it's just kind of the last draw, last piece of hope there for Durham was that Baron. And just didn't work out for them. Yeah, Ehug, just the way Durham was positioned there, it, it seemed as though Hectic and Moffat were kind of like, they, they were like, all right, we're out. Whereas the bot lane was not on the same page, really. And then Ehug dashes over the wall and has oh! free access. Nice ult from Zephyroth to save himself. And he's going to go on the anime girl. Whoa, anime girl able to dance around in this invisibility. But Zephyroth just able to kill her with that soldier. Going to make it out with about, I'd say, 100 no. health left. Cures 
Gonna throw in the rocket, able to finish off Zephyroth. Outplays all of the Akali, but unfortunately <laughs> doesn't outplay the Jinx rocket. So that's Arcane for you. In the end, you will <laughs> get taken. And in the end, St. Clair's still gonna get this Ocean Dragon. No contest here. Will be just me, me, me a Jarvan coming in to try for a steal. At least he's gotta try. But right now, you're down so much gold. It's just so hard to see me taking this. So, Moffat looking for it. We'll get the E in there. Gonna Division. go for the Q. Not Lulu it. found it. Wow. <laughs> okay, of all people, Lulu found the smite there. So, in the end, it will be claimed by St. Clair. Ocean Soul will go over to them. And, and that healing is just gonna be insane. Not only for this Aatrox, but the Gwen, too. Yeah. So, yeah, so Eok actually missed the smite there. And Fresh was able to just have that tiny I, bit of damage. I did to see finish it at 977, yeah. so I think they went for the early smite, and yeah. then Lulu just autoing, I guess, got the. So Fresh coming in with a clutch, <laughs> clutch dragon in there. Let's see that for the support. Hand, hands for the support. Good yeah, job. I mean, hey, securing the soul, right? It's like, why do you need a jungler when you got Fresh as your support, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what the Lulu is for, <laughs> securing those souls. <laughs> 10k gold lead now. Here we are. We're going to see it. How did Fresh find this somehow? Goes for the E. Goes in. 967. Nine sixty-seven. So wow. 967 and the auto found it. So, I mean, it was a good try, right? Like, yeah. the fact that Jarvan was able to get in there, try and go for the smite anyway, just unfortunately did not work out. And, and right now, St. Clair, with this Baron still active, just going to keep snowballing this one and... I just don't really see a way for Durham to come back in this one. I think it's just about wrapped up. Yeah, yeah. In unless we can see some great peel on Q or for Kiores, and she's able to just get so much damage out in this upcoming fight here. Because, but other than that, I don't really see much. The Ocean Soul is up. Ricky's at level 16. He's almost four items in, three and a half basically. It, there, St. Clair is just really strong in this game. And, and the problem is, lead. too, you don't have any healing reduction. Oh, actually, no, they just got it. That's going to be an RN from the jungler. Going to find yeah, four of the Cocosm, but it doesn't matter. The Ocean Soul is here. Ricky going to heal up through everything. They're going to take him down one at a time. Shutdown coming through, but in the end, it's all for naught. Aatrox just walking all over this back line. It doesn't matter, Durham. A good try, but St. Clair will do you two better. 2-0. Sweep here for St. Clair. They will be heading to the NECC playoffs grand finals. Such a good game. So well played. And that is going to be the Nexus exploding and Durham's hearts exploding to St. Clair. Take it 2 0 in this series. What a series here today. And uh, almost like a mini redemption arc for Ricky during the series as well, which was great to see. But yeah, and especially in that last team fight there, you saw Ricky immediately dash onto the Jinx. That's all of Durham's damage in yeah. that last fight. And, and then, he, just, he literally was walking onto the Jinx. Yeah, he Lula just Walter, walked there. And he just keeps autoing here, and she's autoing. He's like, what, what do I do? Yeah. I have Armor Shred. I have Kraken Slayer. I yeah. have, like, the healing reduction's on. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> it was just just a crazy series to watch all together. Definitely yeah. some ups and downs for St. Clair. Uh, but overall, great team chemistry. Great play overall. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah, and I love the fact much more. that, you know, you had Zephyrot hard carrying in one game. You had uh, the top laner and Ricky carrying in the other game. Ehug playing so well both games on this Gwen pick. The bot lane, Ash Lulu coming through for St. Clair, doing so well for them. And we talked all the time about how Barlow struggles on these scaling ADCs. Proves us wrong. Plays perfectly on this Ash. Has so many good plays. In. And, I mean, overall, St. Clair... Almost a perfect game in that second one. Yeah, that second one, I mean, yeah, there's there's not much you can really say. I mean, St. Clair, they got that first blood, and that was the end of the game, really. It was. That's really was. all there was to say about that game. Yeah. Uh, the first game, definitely much closer. Um, definitely a lot, lot more of a, a clencher there. But, yeah, the second game, handily confident uh, win from St. Clair. Yeah, and I can't wait to see what they have in the Grand Finals because if they're looking this good in the semis, their Grand Finals has to look yeah. even better. So, uh, I mean, for me, I, I love to see this team, how much they evolved throughout the season. And they look peak performance going into this Finals. I think they look so good throughout the series. They've been leveling up throughout the, all the playoffs. And, and going into this Finals, they're a scary team to face. Yeah, yeah. And especially talking about this entire season, Barlow, is yeah. definitely I, I want to like point him out specifically has evolved throughout the season. Like he he went from a starter 
to the second evolution, third evolution. He's level 36 now. He, it's, he it's, so good It's right over. Now. And I mean, for me, I definitely think looking at this finals, it gives them a lot of options too, right? Because the fact that he's showing this Ash Lulu in the semifinals means when you go to that finals, you can't just ban out. You can't just play these aggressive ADCs into him and expect to win the laning phase. Uh, you can, he can come in later on in the game and be just as strong and be look and look really good on these scaling ADCs. And yeah. I mean, for the rest of St. Clair, again, it is kind of, you had Ricky had an off game, I think in game number one was just not ready for the Mundo. But other than that, I mean, both bid lane and jungle looked so good in both mm -hmm. games for St. Clair. There really wasn't any weaknesses there. And and going to the finals, I don't know who they're playing yet, but whoever they will be, it's going to be a, a daunting task to try and beat St. Clair. Yeah. All right. And that's really going to be it for today. Um, we're going to go always got to shout out our sponsors. Uh, we got Crunchyroll, Tim Hortons, obviously Crunchyroll, get your 14 day premium free trial. Crunchyroll.com slash Saints. I love anime. You love anime. Go watch some anime and get it for free. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, we also got Tim Hortons, St. Clair SRC, St. Clair Su Alumni Association, Subway. Thank you for all our sponsors. Uh, can't do it without you. Yeah, well, shout out our merch too. Can't forget about our merch. So you can get about it. Uh, cheer on these guys in the finals. We actually have, I think, three teams playing in the finals or semifinals. We have Valorant, League, and COD playing, so definitely want to go shout them out. Saints merch, you can get it at acquired.ca slash saints. Get yourself a jersey, crew neck, hoodie, jacket, whatever you're looking for. They got it there. They got masks as well. Acquired.ca slash saints. Get your merch. Dark mode merch looks pretty sick. I highly, highly recommend you pick yourself some up. And uh, so that is going to be it. So bra we're actually going to get the bracket up here. So St. Clair taking the victory over Durham here it does put them in. So it is going to be the winner of Bay State Maroon versus Queens Golden Gales. Um, I believe that would have taken place already today, or 8.30. So it would have taken place so yeah. right after this. So the winner of that game will play against St. Clair. And, uh, I mean, whoever they play against, Bay State has been very, very good. They, yeah. That was the one team that they did end up losing to earlier Definitely in the season. Definitely gave St. Clair so a run for their money. It is like. going to be scary. Yeah, that will be uh, – I mean, either team wins that. It's definitely going to be a finals to watch. Yeah. Bay State Maroon, based on previous experience, that's going to be a finals to be excited about. But I think for me too, the fact that St. Clair's looked so much better throughout the season gives me so much more hope for them in this last game because Bay State, the only team that really put them down quite a bit and just dominated them – they look a million times better than they did in that game early on in the season. And I think this form of St. Clair is going to be a whole lot scarier than the last version of St. Clair they faced. Yeah, and of course, there's nothing better than seeing a rematch yeah. and seeing what goes differently. Revenge match. Oh, Revenge yeah, match. a grudge match. <laughs> but yeah, that is going to be it for us all here. Semifinals done. St. Clair sweeps the Series 2-0 against Durham. And we'll be facing the winner of Bay State and Queens uh, Golden Gales in the finals of the NECC uh playoffs so st Clair making it to finals great to see them we'll see you guys hopefully in that final sometime soon john and bill bang zudima josh fundy Bufundi for you today hope you have a great day stay safe and uh, love everyone so we're gonna walk in here we'll spot out the akali here we'll go for the early game fight but ehug gonna be waiting here that's both we'll finally come in knock up is available if ricky can land this knock up we'll get the flash forward gonna go for the e as well anime girl gonna have to try and get up but no that's first and blood. that's the problem with tp ignite you don't have the flash to escape anime girl. Uh, oh he's oh he's sandwiched in this mid bush here they're gonna be able to hit the knock up damage coming out a lot of damage coming oh. out the ignite came out Almost able to take down Mobbit. He's going to win this. You... He's going to win this. He wins that. Holy crap. Macaulay is the fact that you get that TP available in the early game. You can't look for an early assassination. That's where you find some power. But both times, the TP had to be used just to get back to lane. And we're going to see now just the aura. Barlow going to be taken down here. Will in. be ulted. That's going to be a three-man. That's going to be Barlow saying bar bar. Oh, in this game. So they're going towards bottom. We're seeing Oof get set up in those, Ooh. In those bushes. Oh, Ignite going to come out. He's going in on Ricky. That's a lot oh, of damage. But the no W. Way. Akali just barely got left in the W. He's going to get pulled right back to the middle. Right back to so we could see those go away at any time. Uh, don't really know when, but in the end, there was a bot turret taken down there by the side of Durham, so they did find that objective bounty for themselves. They're gonna go in on Anime Girl here, but will walk back up. Oh, stun, stun will land. Barlow finds the arrow to Akali's heart, and that is gonna be another big flank here, but 
was found out by that war. They're going to go for the 4 4 Moffat with a good angle here. On the Barlow, Hook going to come through. All going to come through as well. Cataclysm going to come down here in just a second. Moffat, no, not going to pop it. Moffat will go down here. Going to get the flash Q onto Oh, Oof there. Oof. Going to be taken down here in just a second. Will be auto down by Barlow there. Barlow going to find that kill. Ricky Spear. He's still going. Healing. He's still kicking. No, he goes down. Ignite going to come through. But in the meanwhile, St. Clair is winning the rest of the fight. Shutdown going to come through, though. That's so much damage for the Jinx. Going to find one. Going to find two. Double kill over for Jinx. He's going to go back in here trying to get the kill. But Jinx still some alive. 700 gold shutdown. Going to go to Barlow. Going to find three. That's going to be a triple for Jinx. But I think a triple for Barlow. Two ADCs. Just from the, or just from the soldiers themselves. It's down to 3k. But they're very low. Look how much damage they got from this Baron. He's going to go in. Going to find two. Lula oh, going to come through. Going to keep him alive. That's going to be St. Clair getting two. Turning on this Baron. They tried it. It was a good try there. You're down 10. They were like, all right, we're out. Whereas the bot lane was not on the same page, really. And then Ehug dashes over the wall and has oh. free access. Nice ult from Zephyroth to save himself. And he's going to go on the anime girl. Oh, anime girl able to dance around in this invisibility, but Zephyron just able to kill him. Anime girl! Oh, anime girl able to dance around in this invisibility, but Zephyron just able to kill her with that soldier. Gonna make it out with about, I'd say, 100 no. health left. Kiora's gonna throw. Well, at least he's gotta try. But right now, you're down so much gold. It's just so hard to see me taking this. So, Moffat looking for it. We'll get the E in there. Gonna the go vision. for the Q. Naughty. Lulu found it. Wow. <laughs> okay. You, you don't have any healing reduction? Oh, actually, no. They just got it. That's gonna be an R in from the jungler. Gonna find four of the Cockasm, but it doesn't matter. The Ocean Souls here. Ricky gonna heal up through everything. They're gonna take him down one at a time. Shutdown coming through, but. In the end, it's all for naught. Aatrox just walking all over this back line. Sweep here for St. Clair. They will be heading to the NECC playoffs grand finals. Such a good game. So well played. And that is going to be the Nexus exploding and Durham's hearts exploding to St. Clair. Take it 2-0 in this series. What a series here today. <laughs>